Hi guys, Katrina here in the Zebra Wheatie. Welcome back to my channel. Well, today you join me outside the Ulster Museum on a very cold and wet and windy Northern Irish day. The parking here at the Ulster Museum is uh, very limited, but they have the disabled parking closed off with a barrier and you need to uh, ring the bell and speak to security to let you in and they will usually let you in if you have a blue badge like this one uh, which is mine but it's free anyway you don't have to pay for it the only thing is there's only five disabled spaces but that can't be really helped and the rest of the spaces over there are for staff unfortunately everyone else has to share the on-street parking now as far as i know this museum allows people to film on their premises. Uh, I tried contacting them and they didn't reply back so I'm only going uh, by the uh, wing of the prayer here. But I've loved coming to this museum since I was a kid. It's sort of like our version of the Smithsonian. The people that own this museum own several other museums in Northern Ireland and this is the more the the main site that they own. They have a couple of other sites like a, a transport museum and a couple of folk museums and uh, folk parks. So I'm really looking forward to this one. I haven't been here in years uh, and I was wondering if they still have some of the same old exhibits that they had years ago. It's quite easy to find. I found it on the sat nav. The thing is it's not signposted but it's a big old building, so it's really hard to miss. If you can see the uh, facade on it, it's quite distinctive. As usual with any public attraction these days, or any public building really, they're limiting the amount of people in the building at any one time due to COVID-19 restrictions. So you have to pre-book before you go. I've booked and I've got my ticket here, so let's go in. So they do have accessible toilets here and I don't know whether they have a change in places toilet yet or not but uh, I presume that they do. It's good to see signs like this because not every disability is visible. So unlike Titanic Belfast, this museum does allow filming but they asked me to turn off the flash and not to stick my gimbal too close to the display cases in case they set any alarms off, but at least they allow filming. The Titanic Belfast could learn from that. So below the floor here is a tableware set from the 1800s. Here is a plaster copy of a famous high cross, which is basically a Celtic cross, and it's, it's made to the exact scale of the original one, which uh, used to be outside a monastery. The cross acted in part as a bible in stone with carvings upon, based upon uh, biblical stories including the three wise men and the last judgment. The massive canon. I can imagine the damage that that would do. Huge taxidermied Irish wolfhound. Just look at the size of them. I thought Max was big. Uh, the plaque here says that this dog was born on the 17th of March 1923, which is St. Patrick's Day. This is the skeleton of a fully grown Edmontosaurus. I've never heard of that dinosaur before, but it's massive anyway. Of course you can't have a museum about Northern Ireland without mentioning the Troubles, which was the conflict that happened here from the middle 60s to the late 90s. I was alive during that time so I might see a few things that I remember. This museum isn't uh, worried about uh, tackling touchy subjects such as the troubles. This robot here is a bomb disposal robot that was built uh, by the army and used to disarm bombs which there were a lot of during the troubles. I remember the army using a machine like this when I was growing up to defuse a bomb. Uh, of course we were all evacuated to safety like but uh, it was still scary nonetheless. A few exhibits on the political uh, side of things in Northern Ireland. A 
an exhibit on the Good Friday Agreement, which was signed in the 1990s by the participants of the, the talk, including John Hume, David Trimble, uh, Jerry Adams, Martin McGuinness, and uh, Senator George Mitchell from the USA. An exhibit on the Remembrance Day bombing in Enniskillen. Remembrance Day is kind of like our memorial day for uh, soldiers and, and armed forces people. Some old rav gear and rubber bullets and a gun. These were owned by the RUC, which was the police force uh, up until quite recently. The RUC was replaced by the, the Police Service of Northern Ireland. Uh, an old television from the 1960s. And next to it is uh, an old semi camera. Uh, quite a bit of difference between my camera that I'm using now and it. Some old army uniforms from World War I. And next to it is a nurse's uniform from the same war. Here's an American uniform from the same war. There's the banner from the 36th Ulster Division. They were the division of the British Army who uh, fought on Somme in World War I. There's uh, some timekeeping boards uh, from the Harlemuth shipyard, which is where the Titanic was built. Uh, Titanic Belfast had a similar exhibit to this, uh, but this one is in better condition. And behind it is a time clock from a factory. This is a loom from a linen mill. Uh, Northern Ireland is very famous for producing linen. They used to employ children to crawl underneath these and pick up the dust that fell on the ground because it was still valuable. And not all of this was while these machines were still moving. Very, very dangerous job. This exhibit is about the partition of Ireland, which happened in 1926. This on the left is the Ulster's Solemn League and Covenant, and beside it is the Declaration of the um, Republic of Ireland. A prosthetic arm from World War I. I can say they've come on a bit since then. Imagine having to wear that big ugly thing every day. And I thought my leg braces were bad. A huge linen press. Look at the size of it. And behind it is a spinning wheel. Two huge giant deer, which are now extinct in Ireland. We still have deer, but not this big. And there's its skeleton stamp beside it. Some taxidermied big uh, wild boar, and next to it is a huge brown bear. Thankfully we don't have any of these in Northern Ireland. That little arctic fox is cute. He looks very like a husky, doesn't he? Nice hair tops. Huge. This is a Chambers car. It was bought by the museum in 1953. Look at that huge lump of glass. A catalytic converter. And those will be so soon going the way of the dodo uh, with the incoming electric cars. And next to it is something, or a few things that I recognise, like a floppy disk and two cassettes. Huge lump of quartz crystals. This is the museum's main attraction, their mummy, uh, Takabuti from Egypt. It says, in this gallery lies the mummified body of a young woman from Thebes in ancient Egypt. She was brought here to Belfast in 1835 and her coffin was opened and some of the bandage were, were unwrapped. I don't think they do that now because it's really bad for them, for the mummies. It says that through her they get a glimpse of the rich and vibrant culture of ancient Egypt. And there's the mummy. She's so well preserved that she has her own hair, still. There 
as a reconstruction of what Tata Booty would have looked like when she was alive. I think it's amazing that they can do this. This is a huge fragment of a statue that came from a statue of a pharaoh. Uh, I'm not even going to try and pronounce the pharaoh's name. But there it is. Some stone axes. A model of a Neolithic uh, single room house. Completely made out of hay and other things. So just now, a nice docent from the museum, or I think it's called a docent, uh, she helped me to find the, the, where the mummy was, and she was very helpful. All the modern art, I'm not really in the art. Unfortunately, I don't have my GoPro with me because I managed to break it. But the museum itself was quite easy to get around anyway. The whole museum has one way system and it's all well marked out with these mark the markings on the floor here. This museum relies on donations and they're getting quite a bit. I've already given them something and I've even spotted an American dollar in here. They're pottery exhibits. When my dad first finished high school he became a potter for a few years so he would have been good at uh, things like this. He would have loved it. He worked for a company called Ulster Ceramics. Uh, they're still around today, but they build pottery equipment now as opposed to making pottery itself. After that, he went on to university to study for an occupational therapy degree, which is what I want to do. And when he was an occupational therapist, he used his pottery skills to help people with mental illness, uh, to give them something to do, like to take their minds off their illness. All the historic silver, the Kildare toilet service, and this big beautiful dress next to it. I wonder is it a wedding dress? It looks like a wedding dress, but it doesn't say. Of course I had to visit the gift shop. Mm -hmm. They've even got cups with a periodic cable of elements on them. And I have bought this uh, plastic cup. I used to have a cup like this when I was a kid. I know I'm a big kid. Uh, so I bought another one when I seen one. So a block of fudge and this uh, Irish rock. So National Museums Northern Ireland, which is the body that owns all of the museums here. Well, all but a few of them anyway. They allow filming in all of their sites, which is good. I'm really surprised that Titanic Belfast not allowing filming, basically. But anyway, I had a blast and I learnt a few things as well. And I'm feeling a bit old, uh, saying that I've found a few things that I would have grown up with in the museum. If you don't live in Belfast and you're coming here, you definitely need to get a sat nav. Although, if you're from outside of Northern Ireland, wait until the pandemic is over, because they're, they're talking about the stopping flights from the US and stuff. So if you come here now, you mightn't be able to get home again. Uh, but that's in, anyway, that's something else entirely. I am going to give the, the Ulster Museum uh, in Belfast itself 9 out of 10 for disability access. The only reason it's lost a star is because of the parking, but there's not really much that they can do about that. The rest of the museum itself is brilliant. There's ramps and even a stair lift throughout. I would have brought my GoPro with me, but as I said earlier, I managed to put a big scratch in the lens and I have to replace a new Go GoPro now. It can only happen to me. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I certainly enjoyed making it. I will put a link in the description to their website where you can make a booking for visiting all of their sites across Northern Ireland. You have to do this beforehand before you go there or else they could refuse you entry. The tickets are free and their website is fully accessible as well. So if you like this video, please like, comment and subscribe by clicking below. And remember to hit the notification bell as YouTube does not notify you when I upload a video unless you hit the notification bell. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.